Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Little car action right now. Um, so today I figured I'd talk about, I wanna do like a story time. I wanted to talk about the, you know, a couple instances when I actually got rejected when I disclosed my herpes status to someone. Um, Cause it has happened. Like, I mean, I wanna say it still happens today, so to speak. You know, if a guy, not every guy is gonna be down with the fact that I have herpes. So I'm likely still, guys are likely still rejecting me to this day. I'm just not as aware of it because it doesn't hit the same as it used to back when, um, <clears throat> you know, I was initially diagnosed. So I wanted to talk about that today because I'm sure that's a lot of people's reality. Side note, I am in the drive through at Chick-fil-A. Let's just ignore that right now. But um, until I have to order, which is next. But uh, yeah, let's hop right into it, okay? I got diagnosed in 2018 and I was, I had just got out of this kind of fling with this guy that I met on Instagram. And so I was single and so I was still open to dating people. But now that I had herpes, I just felt like there wasn't an option. I wasn't able to, right? Um, yeah, I just felt like there wasn't an opportunity to do that anymore. Or how was I going to do that? Um, now that I can't just talk to someone, get to know them. I can't just message somebody. We can't just go back and forth, keep it cute, flirt, things like that. Because, you know, now I have herpes or whatever. Hold on just a second. Okay, y'all. So I wanted to date, but I just felt like it couldn't be like it used to be. Like easy, so to speak. A guy likes me. I like them. Or, you know, we just loosely chatting in the DMs or in person. I, I meet somebody out or whatever. Oh, my God. Now I have this thing I have to tell them. I can't just like somebody. I just felt like it was, you know, so much more complicated now that I was diagnosed with herpes or whatever. <clears throat> and to a degree it was because it made me feel less confident and less secure in myself. And so that actually showed when it came to dating people. Not initially, but hey, week one, week two, three weeks in, I started feeling like, oh my God, I got to tell this person this. If I don't, it's like I'm keeping something from them. I've just felt this like guilt start to eat me away. Like I was literally keeping this big, bad secret from somebody. And so I would just, that would be the reason why I would tell. Like that would eventually be the reason why I finally just started to say, hey, I need to tell you something. And the I need to tell you something was that, you know, hey, I have herpes or whatever. But in the beginning, the disclosures you know, how I used to disclose was I used to, yeah, just reach the point to where I was like physically ill to where I felt like I can no longer keep this secret from them. Whether we had only been talking a few days, a few weeks, sometimes, you know, a month or so, I would reach that point. Then I would reach the point to where I was like, but how am I going to say it? Because I actually felt sick saying the word. I couldn't even bring the word herpes out of my mouth for a long time. And so when it came to telling somebody I had it, oftentimes I would be crying. I would be saying things like i understand if you don't want to talk to me no more i would just be my energy would be totally deflated and defeated yes thank you my energy would be totally deflated and defeated and it would come across when i was telling somebody this information and so there was a guy that i had met on hinge i think <laughs> back in my dating apps like back in my like back when that was in these dating app streets um, I met him on Hinge and conversation, of course, was pretty immediate. Connection was pretty. Thank you. Um, com the, the communication was back and forth, very steady, very, you know, healthy. Thank you. But, um, you know, we had transitioned. Of course, we were talking on the phone at this point. I think we had seen each other out a few times. We had gone on a few, you know, dates to get to know each other. Still kind of casual pace, but I reached that point of like, oh my God, I have to tell this person something. I can't go another day. I can't go another second. And so I remember, um, you know, we were talking on the phone and I was on the way to work and I was just like, I have to tell you something. And thank you. I have to tell you something. And you know, he could tell by my tone, he could tell by the nervousness in my voice because, you know, I had been confident or just normal, so to speak. Our communication had been normal up until that point. But when it was time for me to have to tell him something, it turned into me kind of just being nervous or just my voice was shaking. He was literally like, Amber, what, you know, what's up? And I was just like, I was dating this guy, 
met on Instagram. We had a little situation and ultimately now, you know, I have herpes. So I just kind of said it like that. And, um, you know, there wasn't an immediate like, ah, oh, no, nah, like nothing like that. But I could tell it was probably kind of like shocking news to him. I could also tell that I was probably the first person who's ever, you know, told him that they had an STD, like probably in a romantic capacity. And from there, the energy kind of went like this. Y'all see the decline? Um, it was less phone calls, less initiation on his part, and more of, you know, kind of, he gave me friend zone energy. It kind of was like I was placed in the friend zone. So I would consider that a rejection. Somebody that I liked and was interested in, and I felt like the energy was mutual for a long, you know, up until that point. And then I told him that I had herpes and then the energy totally changed. So I consider that to be, you know, him rejecting me because of it, him no longer being interested, being interested in me because of it. And so I did cry when I was disclosing to him. I do remember that. And after, you know, the, in the days and weeks after when I felt like his energy changed, of course, I blamed it on the herpes. Of course, I thought it was because I had herpes. Like, it was the herpes fault, right? Now I know that anytime somebody rejects you, it's a form of protection. Anytime, for any reason, whether it's your herpes, whether it's the amount of kids you got, whether it's how much money you make or don't make, whether it's because of where you live, what you do, who you are, for any reason, any other virus that you may have, any other ailments, any other uh, set of circumstances, Ultimately, if a person switches up on you, that is your protection. Now, that doesn't mean that they're a bad person. That doesn't mean that they don't deserve to have a, ha have a happy, healthy life and do they thing. It just simply means that that person is not for you. And so back in my early stages of being diagnosed, I took everything personal. I took the rejection personal. I hated myself. I hated anybody who rejected me. I hated fact that I had herpes it was just like a whole bunch of negative how much of negativity and so but I also think that the way I disclosed was negative I also think that you know I felt negatively about it right I feel like my just my negative disclosures my disclosures when people kind of when I was rejected that it actually affected me it was more so because I still felt some type of way about myself again Fast forward to now in 2023, if a person rejects me because I have herpes or, you know, decides that they don't want to entertain me in a romantic capacity, it doesn't even affect me in the same way because I've accepted myself and the fact that I have it. So another person's opinion about me and the fact that I have herpes and them not wanting to be with me because I have it, it doesn't matter really it doesn't matter god i hope y'all can see me it doesn't matter so like it did back in the day when i valued external validation um so that was kind of like a rejection where i kind of was friend zoned right the energy just declined um steadily over time to the point to where i just knew what was up i don't even know if we had any conversation about it like kind of like a closing conversation because to be honest him and I are still friends to this day like truly platonic friends but if I would have just been mad at him and hated his guts because his energy changed I would have possibly missed out on a you know business partner and a friend so I guess that's a lesson in that like not all rejection has to be malicious not all rejection has to be like oh they're a terrible person if they can't they don't want to be with me because I have herpes like no nah, it just it just is what it is disclosure you know it's it should be a conversation where both of y'all are talking about your std history your sexual health and history it shouldn't just be a i have something to tell you oh my god like both of y'all need to be coming forth with some information just because just because you have herpes and you have to tell somebody you have it doesn't mean you don't want to know if they have something when's the last time they tested positive for something When's the last time they've been tested, period? All of these things, you are well within your rights to know. And sometimes we sleep on ourselves. Sometimes we forget who we are. Sometimes we're just so willing and ready and wanting to be chose by 
somebody, anybody, that we'll even look aside for our own, you know, personal health and safety. You need to be asking questions as well. While you're disclosing and letting somebody know that you have herpes, you need to also be asking, hey, when's the last time you've been tested? Do you, have you ever had a herpes test? Uh, and if the person that you're asking gets all weirded out and like, isn't feeling it, then you need to question that in itself. Red flag, red, literally red flag, because we are grown. It is 2023. It's too much going on out here for us not to be talking about these things. Oh, you want to sleep with me? You want to see me naked? You want to do this and do that to me? But when I start to ask you, when's the last time you've been tested? Now the energy changed. All right, keep that same energy. <laughs> keep that same energy. Because I'm out of here. Because, you know, we got to do better. So, um, and there have been other times, you know, where you know, I've told guys in, again I was just met with stagnant energy and it used to really bother me but I quickly noticed that because of how bothered I got during rejections because of how bothered I would get when someone's energy would change towards me because I had herpes I quickly realized man I need to get back out of the I need to get out of the dating game I need to take a few steps back and chill and actually figure this out for myself so when someone says they don't want me, it doesn't hurt my feelings in the same way. It doesn't make me feel so bad, so low, so down. Like, So I learned my lesson pretty quick. And a lot of times, you know, we are headed out here. We want to we wanna go, we want to try to date somebody when we're not ready. We want to try to date somebody rejects us and then the whole world's over. And it's my herpes and I hate myself and I hate my life. And then we find ourselves settling or getting on sites like uh positive singles are saying that I'm only going to date somebody who has herpes so I don't have to worry about disclosing so I don't have to worry about rejection then we start doing all these unhealthy habits for ourselves when we should just spend time working on ourselves so if you've been rejected by you know for having herpes I feel you've been there done that if you've been rejected and you feel like you won't have an opportunity to date or you won't have the dating life that you truly desire that's a lie from the pit of hell spend time working on yourself go back to the drawing board Ask yourself the questions, have the hard conversations with yourself, and realize that it's not your herpes that's making you really feel that way, or the rejection of your herpes, even if it's the rejection of another person. Deal with that. You know, deal with why someone's rejection of you makes you feel so low and less than. Because, you know, these are the conversations I dead ass had to have with myself. So, little story time was kind of all over the place. I'm in the car hustling and bustling. Um, but yeah, I just want to show, I just want to tell y'all, you know, rejection happens, has happened to me, is, you know, is happening, will happen. Who gives a rat's ass, right? <laughs> as long as you accept yourself. So I'm at my destination. I'm about to upload this video. I love y'all. Get into the comments and this is a safe space. Share your story. I hope this uh, video bless somebody and uh, we'll talk soon.